There are no, now more dairy cows in New Zealand than people. We still laugh about being more sheep there than people. There's certainly now more dairy. In fact, you know, you might recall people who used to buy the dairy farms and put um, pine plantations on top of them to get the big tax deductions. You are now going to see around Australia the, dairy, the pine plantations being pulled out and the dairy farms going back in. Why is all this important for us? Well, apart from the revenue being generated, it also has an impact on the Australian dollar. And some of you may well have seen this chart, I do it quite a lot. The red line is what's happening to commodity prices in the United States in US dollars. The blue is an index of what's happened to wholesale prices in the United States. So goods, you know, cars, <coughs> food, energy, before it actually gets to the retail. So what I do is I divide that red line, the commodity price line, by the wholesale prices. So two US dollar, US economy indexes. And that gives me this, this line here, the dark red. And so you can sort of see through that period there for really for 40 years almost, commodity prices were falling relative to the price of cars, textiles, food, whatever, and then surged as China and India got in on the act. Why is that important? That's the red line there, and the blue line is the Australian dollar, US dollar exchange rate. And we've all benefited from this. The rise in commodity prices, even if you haven't had money in the mining companies, you've benefited because this has brought down the cost of all those imported things. So most of you are buying European cars more often than you used to, having your overseas trips more often than you used to, because of the stronger Australian dollar. At around 93 cents, 92 and a half cents, I think the Australian dollar is actually pretty good value. It's about right. The economy is the budget forecast, and again, what it means for us as investors. Household consumption, in other words, retail spending expected to grow around about three, three and a quarter percent, and again, that's off the back of this rise in employment of about one and a half percent, growth in wages of about three. Housing is expected to be an important part of growth, so rising three and a half percent through to five and a half percent growth per year, and those are my estimates of what it actually means for the number of private dwellings that are going to be started across Australia. So this is going to help businesses like Jennings, like uh, Lendlease, the big construction companies, and Leighton's, except Leighton's is now owned by the Germans and the Spanish. So those are the main sources of growth. This is a concern for the government. In other words, investment spending by the, the private sector, non-dwellings, as you can see there, that's now going to be falling for the next three or four years. That's why they're doing the big infrastructure spends right around Australia, including here on South Road. Why they're worried about this? This is the expectations coming from the Bureau of Statistics as, called, as uh, told to them by the companies. So m investment in the mining sector could fall to about $74 billion. So down $30 billion on 13, 14, and really not much above what it was four years ago. You've got somewhere like manufacturing. I mean, that's, that's a chronic level of investment. It's going to be half of what it was five years ago. Trade, probably still falling, but that may well pick up a bit. But, you know, the concern is the private sector investment in <coughs> construction activity, in investment, is actually going to fall right off. So they've got to do these other things. Employment, again, this is why we're a bit concerned about going too strongly into the discretionary retailers rather staying with coal or West Farmers with coals and woolies, is employment growth is expected to remain quite slow, about 1.5%. The unemployment rate is expected to go up, which is not probably going to be good for confidence. But this one here is chronic. The labour force participation rate, in other words, the number of people who are in the workforce or looking for work is expected to continue to fall. You know, partly that's people just dropping out of the workforce. Now, governments have been trying for the last 15 to 20 years to get that to move in the other, other direction. It's just not working. Household savings ratio. <coughs> this is a strange one, because this is really what drives a lot of what happens in the economy and retail spending. And the government really never comes out with forecasts, so I'm sort of making them up. So I'm expecting the household savings ratio to sort of come down marginally, but it's not going to be a lot. Now, as good Australians, as our net worth rose up to the GFC, you know, housing prices were going up strongly, share prices were going up, we all felt a lot better. So our net worth rose. And this sort of from the Reserve Bank shows how net worth rose up until the GFC. And you took the dwellings and the financial assets and took off the debts. So as that rose, you notice over the years, this is rising, the amount we actually saved fell. So as we're feeling richer, we're sort of saying, well, we don't need to save anymore, we're just 
covenant. So we decided to save less and less. So rather than saving 10 to 15% of our take home pay, for much of the, of the 2000s, we actually, at some time, were actually spending more than we were taking home. So we're doing that by going against the equity in our homes. And then when the GFC hit, net worth dropped. So the value of homes dropped, the value of share prices and superannuation assets fell, the debt stayed much the same. So all of a sudden we felt a lot worse off, so we started to save. That's what really damaged the retail sector. We went from growing our spending by actually drawing on our wealth to now saying, okay, we've now got to save again. So we went from really saving nothing out of current income to now saving about 10, 15%. And that's what really affected the retailers, particularly the discretionary retailers. My view is this is improving, but the budget, I think, is going to create a lot of uncertainty. How are people going to be paying their new medical bills and stuff like that? So I, I think we're in for a situation where the household savings ratio is probably going to move sideways for a while. Um, exports are expected to be a major part of growth in the economy, in other words, particularly as the LNG and iron ore shipments pick up because of all the new big projects. But even though we're one of the world's great exporters, it's probably not going to contribute much more than about, as you can see here, one to one and a quarter percent of the 3% growth the government's expecting. Inflation's staying really quite low, about two and a quarter to two and a half percent. This is sort of consistent with the Reserve Bank's numbers. Wages are growing about 3%. Now, I in fact believe wages are probably growing slower than that because of the uncertainty in the labour market. But again, that's not suggesting, sort of see here, wages growth is actually not going to be a lot more than inflation. So real wages are likely to be growing quite slowly, which again will affect retail spending. And this is the Reserve Bank's forecasts. So they're expecting inflation about 2 to 3%, which would suggest they're not going to be moving the cash rate from the current 2.5% anytime soon. And that's also what's expected by the money markets. So these, this little green line here is what the futures markets the, on the Australian Stock Exchange are expecting for the cash rate. So they're expecting the cash rate really to stay around about 2.5%. And these lines here are the expectations about um, future cash rates as represented by the, the cost <coughs> of funds to the banks for three years fixed interest rates and one year fixed interest rates. These are the wholesale rates in the market. So. As you can see, they've been very flat for quite a long time. So markets really aren't expecting interest rates to move very much. You've done very well as investors out of the term deposits for the last four or five years. And a bit of a story here. Back prior to the global financial crisis, term deposit rates were sitting about 5%. If the banks were borrowing in the wholesale markets or overseas, they were paying between 7 and 8%. But they thought that was better value than paying you much more than 5%. That's why they're closing branches it was costing them too much to run the branches compared to what they could borrow the money at overseas more cheaply, more efficiently. In the aftermath of the global financial crisis, money market rates fell. But in this period here, there was real concern that Australia would be shut out of the world financial markets. We could well have seen our banking system largely close in 2008. And that's when the federal government, Mr Swan, put on the government guarantee. It wasn't for our benefit, it was for the benefit of the overseas investors. But at that time, the, regular, the regulators like the Reserve Bank and uh, APRA said, you, the banks, need to raise more money from domestic depositors. Get out there and put your term deposit rates up. And that's what happened. So as depositors, retail depositors, we've actually done a lot better than if you were a BHP trying to put your money away for three or so years. So through this, whole, through this period since the GFC, term deposit rates have been well above where they would otherwise have been if it hadn't been for this demand by the regulators for the banks to raise more money domestically. That's been very good. But notice here this spread between these wholesale money market rates and term deposits is coming in. And that's why you're not seeing the banks any, the banks are nowhere near as aggressive in trying to raise money from you as they were four or five or even 12 months ago. They don't need the money as much. Plenty of capital, plenty of liquid assets on board. So it's quite likely we're going to be seeing this spread continue to come in. That's why we're going to be working harder for you to actually get, make sure the term deposits are earning you some decent money. But the other side of it is they need, they need it less on the funding side. They've got very little competition on home loans. So this, the crosses here is a three year fixed rate home loan. And that margin is spreading out. So the banks are actually making more money. 
Great. So you're going to be seeing less value from your term deposits and more value on your dividends. Uh, profits in Australia, like that US chart, so the blue is the level of profits per quarter in Australia, and that you see that's now again at record levels. It's just that our share prices are nowhere near adjusted like they have in the United States. But we're sort of saying, just hang in there because the dividend yields are very good. Um, so summary, but I'll hand over to, to Darren. Growth staying slow, and that's going to keep interest rates and inflation down. But it's quite likely in your portfolios, if, if we can get you another you know, 3 or 4% growth in, in income this year, that'll be a lot better than what PAYG earners are going to be getting. The growth areas, housing, public, retail growing, and it's a major part of the economy, but it's going to be housing, public infrastructure and exports will be the real strong growth areas. Employment growth quite slow, unemployment staying relatively high. We're going to continue to save quite strongly, which is good for the banks, not good for the retailers. Set interest and inflation rates remaining low. And then there's this issue about productivity, which is going to have to be really sorted out. Otherwise, we're not going to be seeing growth in our companies. And that's another reason why we're often saying buy into some of these great overseas companies when the currency is around 95 cents or a dollar, because you actually are getting companies that are getting much stronger productivity growth than if they're just focused in Australia. I'll hand over to Darren, and he'll go through what the budget is going to mean for a lot of you.